Let me get right into our first story. Let's break it down together. Star Wars Acolyte is a disaster already, and it hasn't even shown yet. It comes out in June. And there's other things Christian parents need to avoid right now on film and television. The Acolyte specifically, I want to just play a clip from Neurotic, which is, this is one of the leading conservative commentaries on all things in nerd culture, popular culture, things that are fun. And this is a conservative who actually has been breaking down and he's been taking apart the mentality behind some of these things that have happened. So let's watch this. You were the chosen one! You know, it's hard for people to realize, and I'm not supposed to say this, and I wasn't supposed to say it then, but no. Slam! He was not! Destroy this shit, not join them! No. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nerdronics. It was a good intro. Dot com. After the resounding lack of success of the female-centric Ahsoka in 2023, Disney Star Wars decided to start 2024 with this. And we're in 2024 now, and I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. Boy, here we go again. Yeah, I'm out. That was the director <laughs> of the much unanticipated Ray film, Charmaine Obey Chinoy, when 2024 was just hours old, never mind the fact that she is not the first woman to shape Star Wars and certainly not the first activist woman to shape Star Wars. My body. I think it's so interesting that, you know, you have this incredible base of people who watch Star Wars. There's male and female, but the majority is male. And there's this avoidance of letting this be something that, you know, the adventure series, like The Mandalorian, which feels like an old Western, you know, that, that has done really well for Disney. And it feels, there's women, powerful women figures in it, especially when Gina Serrano was in it. And there's other female figures as well. And you just have this weird narrative that there has to be women in every leadership role and there has to be completely led by women or it's not relevant. Yet their whole audience, they don't know their audience, but they're doing this as a political cause, not as entertainment. ...of work over the last 20 years has been uh, guided by my activism and every okay. single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert, but it is there. <laughs> It's why you fail. But not to worry, Debbie Downer, because Lucasfilm has figured it out. They've cracked the code, and they're going to turn things around by shaping Star Wars with a female activist showrunner. There I go, getting all negative again. Like I said, this one's going to be completely different. It's going to be female-centric with diversity and inclusion. That's right, the long-awaited, much-anticipated Acolyte trailer dropped a couple of days ago, described by Judas Cow, I'm sorry, showrunner Leslie Headland as Frozen Meat. Okay, so before we get into Frozen Meat Star Wars, that's just gonna talk about this trailer dropped and there was it was ratioed by over now it's close to seven or eight hundred thousand dislikes and at one point it was one million but a bunch got deleted i don't know how they do that if disney has a direct relationship to youtube but you have over a million people who are saying i don't want to see this what happened to my star wars why does this feel like a cause you know series that's like for the lgbtq plus community not even for women anymore but for the gay community it's like literally for people who are transition, people who are uh, non-binary, people who are everything but your average audience. And people were just confused and lost in this because every role, if you look through it, and they're gonna go through this in this nerd rock, that's why I wanna watch it together. There's not even like a white person in the film, hardly at all. There, I think there's a whole, it shows all these acolytes and it's all women or aliens. And then there, or there's a couple maybe little boys who are of color and there's not, and I'm not, again, it's not about white, black thing, but it's a, a direct cause of saying, I'm gonna have my activism at play here and not just show a movie or a series that would appeal to everybody in the masses. And so there's not white kids, there's not men, there's not men in strong roles. The men are in support roles that support the women. And we've done this over and over and over. It's not working because it doesn't feel balanced. There's an imbalance in how it's being presented. Your imbalance woke me from a deep slumber. Imbalance? Women should be in powerful roles. Women of color should be in powerful roles. Men of color should be in powerful roles. It's not about that, but it's no longer storytelling. It's now political activism. It's Kill Bill. <laughs> I'm I'm curious Rosen what that Bill. means. Can we elaborate? Are we getting a musical? You're not getting a musical. Although okay, that was Kathy's first question when I pitched it to her. She was like, so a musical with a snowman? I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. Are you stupid or something? So much of it was about, you know, the kind of villainess actually be a powerful misunderstood woman it was hitting me on such a deep level and yet servicing the genre i mean why not will and grace meets robocop or modern family meets saw or sesame street meets scared straight 
I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy to suggest that Disney might want to try Star Wars meets Star Wars, but we know they can't do that. I digress. Anyway, with the Acolyte trailer, Disney Star Wars has managed to do the unthinkable, the unimaginable. They have brought us all together again, just not in the way they intended, because aside from a few clapping seals, everyone hates it. As far as I know, this is the first Disney Star Wars project to be ratioed on YouTube, and that's certainly going to get worse. Yeah, and that was only 300,000 when he was looking at this. Now it's over a million people, and they've somehow turned it off. And so the over a million people are complaining. That's a, that's a way to boycott or complain, to say, hey, we don't like this. Thumbs down. This doesn't look like our Star Wars. This looks like something else. Again, it's someone who's not a Star Wars fan who's making an activism series out of this and a beloved world that's already been abused over and over by Kathleen Kennedy and others. As time goes on and after watching it, I understand why. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. I see diversity. I see inclusion. I see equity. And lesbians in space. Oh, and it doesn't end there, although I wish it did. I will say that almost everybody who's playing a role in this film is part of the LGBTQ plus community, which is was really important to this director. Because apparently Lucasfilm hasn't leaned into the South Park meme enough. Put a chick in it, make her gay. Put a chick in it, make her name it gay. <laughs> so South Park did a horrendous but really funny episode about Disney, which Disney was mad at, and Kathleen Kennedy wanted to figure out how to sue them because that was supposed to be her. And it just basically showed what they're doing. They're just they're just basically putting females in every role. They're putting gay people in every role. They're putting as extreme as they can and everything to show how diverse they could be as a company. And again, they're marginalizing the majority of their audience. Put a chicken in, make her gay. Put a chicken in the linguine and make her gay. That is some of this. And I want it lame. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't yet. It does because this is Disney Star Wars, son. What happened? Well, Perry, George Lucas's timeless story was subverted and destroyed by a bunch of ideological effeminate men and women. Oh, wait, that's not you, Perry. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, apparently we've gotten it all wrong because Star Wars is not about good or bad. The best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on, truly. You know what I mean? Through the ages, what? I've seen evil take many forms. So, <laughs> and then she walks through. But this is crazy. Like, they're saying there's no good or evil in Star Wars. That's the whole premise of the story is ultimate evil and ultimate um, good. And it's like there's Darth Vader on the dark side, and he gets pulled back over the light side. And the way that they're interpreting this is not canon. It's not the way that Star Wars fans or that just the average base of people would interpret it. It's being like through the lens of very particular people groups. To be fair to Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, it's like the old saying goes. I mean, right after, look the other way when it comes to her. Write what you know. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. And Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant would probably know a thing or two about that. And as far as the Acolyte trailer telling you what this series is about, I have no idea. Other than bland, diverse actors in bland robes to bland music. in another bland D plus series from a showrunner who was asked what her favorite Star Wars was and couldn't answer the question. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. Wow. So here's the problem. Leslie Hetland never even really talks about the show. She doesn't really know about Star Wars. She wants to talk about diversity and inclusion. She wants to talk about herself. She wants to add trans and gay and non-binary actors and characters because she wants that to be seen across the universe. She's taking this powerful platform of creativity and she's trying to inject so much into the canon of George Lucas. And she then accused fans after she found it was being racialed so much of not knowing what they want and that they need feminism. And she wants to make it fit within the modern world. Like she says, I want Star Wars to be part of the modern world. And she wants to alter the tradition of Star Wars. And that's ultimately why this was such a bad decision. Now, before we go further, I know that this is an election year. And are your finances stable in an election year? 
And I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Birch Gold, who can help you to diversify your 401k, your IRA, or even just get some gold as, as an investment that's always safe. And I know that there's been so many people, Rand Paul and others, who've been talking about the power of gold and how it's a commodity that has only been going up in this season and it's stronger than the dollar right now. So I want to encourage you to go and get a free information packet from birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles. And this is going to give you a lot of free information that will help you to make a decision. Is gold right for me? And if you're thinking about where the economy has been so crazy right now and you do want some of that stability, this is a great stabilizer. It's a great, you know, not all of your money would go into any one area, but if you put some of it in some really solid areas, you're going to have a really good foundation going into 2024's election season, which our, you know, electionomics is a real thing. So are we going to go into a place of stability or not? This will help stabilize you. I hope you guys will visit birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles and get your free information packet today. So what should parents know about the LGBTQ plus that's invading your kids' favorite Disney franchises? There really is an agenda. Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar. I was looking at one Star Wars site and I was looking through how many people have appeared who are of that community on a series or a movie, whether they were in real life or whether they were on the show. We're also seeing this in Pixar now. And so you're watching Disney is causing this agenda, which only impacts about 6% or less of the total population. And they're bringing it into the mainstream. And there's a lot of families who are saying, you know, we don't mind this being in society. People have the freedom to choose what they want to choose. But we mind when you're injecting our family with this. And I think about my daughters, we had them in a, a out school class for drama, performing arts, they joined the class for this out school program. Now, out school helps people who are in home schools or whatever else to do clubs and classes outside of your school on Zoom. And so we've been doing some other out school classes. They've been good or groups that have been good. So we had them in an out school class for drama. And the first week, the drama teacher gets on with little kids. These are like eight, nine year olds. And it's talking to him about what he's about to do. And then he goes, OK, so we're going to talk about pronouns. What's your pronoun? That's it. Um, we're leaving, kids. And the kids were all completely stunned. Like they don't know what pronouns they should use. They've never even talked about that because they all were homeschoolers who came from conservative backgrounds. So they didn't even understand what he was saying. And so they're like, mm, what does that mean? And as well, some people like to be called by a preferred pronoun. And we want to, and so he goes into the class is only 45 minutes to 55 minutes long. And he does 10 to 15 minutes on this, but I wanted to listen. And I know my daughter, she's like, I can, I can help course crack this as it goes. And if it got weird, I was going to jump in. It got weird, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it was all weird, but if it got weirder to the point where there's full indoctrination, I was going to jump in. And he's asking these two young boys who are like eight or nine, so are you a he or a she or a they or a they, them? Or we just start asking him, like, how do we address you in the class? Instead of just being a normal class that's about drama and about improv, it turned into an identity issue where there's politics and there's an activism going on where we couldn't just have a class. And again, out school, you have to be careful with these out school teachers and other teachers online that you're gonna subject your children to. And he was actually a delightful teacher throughout the rest of the class, but we never went back to the class because we knew if he was gonna do activism on the front end that hardcore, he's gonna inject that in every single class as well because he can't just be a teacher. He's bringing in a part of himself that he feels like has to be front and center before he even teaches or does his job. This is in his mind, the more important job is to indoctrinate children versus helping children to go to an acting class, which is what we paid for. I think I want my money back. <laughs> what are you gonna do, strong arm me? <laughs> and this is what Star Wars is doing and, and Pixar is doing and Marvel's doing. I don't know in the new movie Inside Out ver version two, if Riley, the main character, she has both male and female kind of um, emotions in her head, whereas the other characters seem to have mostly male or mostly female. And so are they going to make her be non-binary? That's been one of the reports on the Disney threads. And also the rumors are still swirling about Elsa coming out as a lesbian or at least non-binary at some point. Nope. I've had friends on the inside of Disney who said, no, we're not going to change that. We would start with a character and not just surprise the audience. But you never know with how Disney's going right now. If the current leadership over Disney gets to stay involved, and there's a board right now, there's a board issue where they're trying to take, hostly take over the board. The conservatives, Nelson Peltz and others are trying to take over some board seats so they can have a vote on this. Because right now, Kathleen Kennedy is like, oh, girl power, let's do it. Put a lesbian in it. We saw the South Park ads and neurotic. Well, or the South Park cartoon and neurotic. So it's only going to, you know, become a place where Disney leads the way in the woke agenda all the way into the ground, though, because this really brings us into a place of understanding that you can't do this. They've lost two thirds of their entire value as a company and their series are tanking. They went from 2019 of having, I think six 
movies that made over a billion dollars to having every single movie be either complete tanking and series be either a tanker or just breaking even or just moderate success. Not any big wins since they've allowed DEI and wokeism to be in the front and center of everything they're doing. Well, I want to hear from you. How are you dealing with companies like Disney? And I've just used Disney as an example. who are trying to inject activism towards your children, and they think it's their responsibility to tell your family what to think. And I know we're all getting sick of it, which brings us into our next story. And I want to encourage you, if, you, if you're not watching The Sean Bull Show, you can watch all of our stories in a row through The Sean Bull Show and really get a feel for what's going on in culture right now, what's going on in the world around you, and politics and popular culture and entertainment. As a Christian, from a Christian perspective, we have to think about these things. And also come join me at YouTube. Subscribe and leave a comment where I'll join you in the comment section. I want to hear from you about what you're thinking about this story.